At this moment, allow me to welcome our Honorable Minister of Trade and Industry from Malawi, Honorable Mark Kasongas. He is a strong, ardent entrepreneur and a very good Christian. So having him in our presence with a chance to share with us one or two is very honorable. Please. Jesus. Good afternoon, everybody. Bishop Akole Diocese and Chancellor of the Bishop Stewart University in Balala, that's here in Uganda, and your fellow bishops and the whole religious fraterno. My colleague, Honorable Minister of Trade in Uganda, uh, your colleague, Honorable Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation in Uganda, the first Deputy Speaker of Parliament in uh, Ghana, the Commissioner General of the Revenue Authority, distinguished panelists who have spoken through, 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 through since yesterday, captains of trade and industry, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as a special recognition, please allow me to salute the President of the Human Capital International, Dr. Emmanuel De Tumi, and his team for organizing this noble vision of, for us Africans. It's unique, I must admit. Uh, I will start from the title itself, Religion and Enterprise Africa Summit 2022. My first time to be in this sort of environment. And why am I saying this? Business success on this continent is associated with which? Medicine. You have to have multi to be successful. And it's a fact. It is a fact across the continent. But the real fact is what we are seeing today religious infused into our business. It tells us one important message. Only prayer will make you successful. The shortcuts, the Commissioner General said, include believing in mood. And you don't survive. I've seen a lot of people who try to go to the Ngangas to try and be prosperous in business. It really doesn't work. If you have to stand firm and prosper in business, I repeat, only prayer is the answer. Now, let's look at the theme of this gathering. Entrepreneurship transformation through faith-based innovation, trade, investment, and technology. I've already said enough about believing in our faith or living in our faith where business is concerned. Forget about anything else, pray and work hard. That's what will take you to prosperity, nothing else. Now, out of that theme, I've been given a topic which is the role of sustainable SMEs and SMIs in promoting Africa's agenda 2063, the Africa we want, and I also talk about investment opportunities in Malawi. Before I proceed, talking about this topic, I've been an entrepreneur for 48 years. The Mark Katsonga you see here is a four-year civil servant, immediately after leaving school, then 48 years in business, then eight years as a public servant. Uh, I'm not too old, but I'm old enough to know what some of you don't know. Now, my presentation will focus on the Africa Union Agenda 2063 and its linkage to entrepreneurship and development of MSMEs. What is it? We have been hearing about AU. It used to be OAU at one stage, it changed. It's now OAU. We are now hearing of uh, what AU is trying to do for Africa. I'll analyze all those issues. 
Because one biggest problem we have in general, and more so with government and governments, is that we do a lot, but very, very few of the beneficiaries know what we are doing. We lack sufficient publicity of government the government is doing. I'm new in the ministry, and I'm new as a minister. My longest term as a public servant, I've been a member of parliament. But going into government this time around, it's now six, seven months, I have discovered that our government does a lot. There are a lot of programs. Some of them, I'll narrate them here when time comes. But when you go to the, not even to the rural, you go into the location to find out how much people know about what government is planning for their country or for our country. Very, very few people know. Even the organization AU, even our regional organizations, we have them in East Africa, we have them in West Africa, we have them in Southern Africa, we have Comesa there, we have Sadiq there. But certainly even the name itself, go to a village in a remote area, take a group of people and ask them, what does Sadiq mean? They don't know it. Go to Ghana in the remote areas, ask them, what, what does Equus mean? They don't know it. So we certainly have a problem. Because we cannot continue to plan, and yet the people you are planning for don't know what you are planning for them. All you hear are all sorts of names. What is our government doing? They are doing nothing about us. They don't care. Politicians, all they want is to eat our tax money. And those are the stories we hear day in, day out. Now, gatherings of this nature gives us an opportunity to start passing on the message. Passing on the message to the right people, passing on the message to the beneficiaries, and let us move together as a country, as a region, and as a continent. As you may remember, at the 24th African Union Assembly of Heads of State and Government in January 2015 in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia that is, the agenda 2063 was adopted. It's about six, seven years ago when this agenda was adopted. But as I put it, a lot of people do not know it, do not know what it intends to do for Africa, yet alone the name itself. Now, what is the Africa Union Agenda 2063 all about? I'll dwell a bit on that, just to make clarification. Uh, the shared strategic framework for the continent encapsulates not only Africa's aspirations for the future, but also identifies flagship programs which can boost African economic growth and development and lead to the rapid transformation of our continent. Together we stand, the more we achieve. That's what it is here. We have tried setting ourselves at regional basis. Yes, a lot has been achieved, we must admit. We, we have to thank our leaders for that. Uh, but we are now saying we live on a continent with a lot in common. What is that we can do together to achieve more, improve the livelihood of our people, to fight the economic battles as one unit? and see how far we can go. Agenda 2063 is Africa's shared development blueprint, developed through a people-driven process to achieve inclusive and sustainable social economic development over a 50-year period. 50 years when said, it appears to be a lot of time. But certainly on the ground, in practice, we'll be shocked to see that 50 years has passed but nothing tangible has been done. So the start time to start preparing for this 2063 agenda is now. I'll give you an example of 2020 vision for Malawi, which was more or less copied from Malaysia. You know, Malawi and Malaysia, at the time of independence, were at almost at para. So in Malaysia, they developed a 2020 vision with clearly defined objectives, what they wanted to achieve. Our head of state visited, you know, Malaysia, came back home and said, it appears it could be a good idea to have our own 2020 vision. 
That was in the 19, early 1990s. So we had a good 15 plus years ahead of us. But I'm sorry to say that when we are hitting 2020, maybe we are worse off than before the 2020 agenda started. What do I want to say here for the 2063 agenda? We are talking of 20 or 40 plus years to get to 2063. Maybe some of us will not be there, but I believe I'm likely to be there. How old I will be, I don't want to say. We have more than enough years, but time goes very fast. If we don't start doing the needful now, we'll be shocked that as we hit 2063, which will be 100 years of the existence of the AU, or OAU, if you like, we may not be where we want to be. So I repeat, the time to start serious planning for 2063 is now. Our leaders have done their part. What it means is the technocrats to start looking at all the issues which will make 2063 a success. This 2063 agenda seeks to deliver on a set of seven aspirations, each with its own set of goals, which, if achieved, will move Africa close to achieving its vision for the year 2063. I urge all captains of industry herein gathered and those listening online to familiarize yourselves with this strategic document for our continent. The document is available online, hard copy, and I'm sure some have got it already, but I know the majority of the people on the continent don't have it yet. Let's make an effort to get this blueprint. It is very important for us as individuals. It is very important for our countries. It is very important for Africa. Now, what is the linkage between Agenda 2063 and MSMEs? I should start by explaining that real development starts with the small scale industries. But that can only be achieved if they are properly nest. So government has a job to do, big organizations have a job to do, to work with the small industries and push them up so that they can make their fair contribution to our countries and therefore make a fair contribution to our continent. Because let's admit, Africa Maybe it's the least developed continent on earth, but we can change that. Let's understand what it means. Let's understand what it means for us individually. Let's understand what it means for us religiously. Let's understand what it means for us socially. Let's understand what it means for us industrially. Now, <clears throat> the micro, small, and medium size enterprises are highly important and they are the drivers of economic growth and development, which include job creation in all our African countries. Jobs are part of our daily life. When you don't have a job, you have a problem. Jobs are supposed to be created. Now, the biggest creator of jobs are the small-scale industries. That's why governments are encouraged to make sure that we are nursing these small ventures which are scattered all over, in the cities, in the rural areas, and if they are nest properly, they grow and they create a lot of employment for almost everybody. Now, question is, is our continent achieving that? My gut feeling is not yet there. Why am I saying this? There is massive unemployment on the continent. We need to do something about it. There is no doubt of the critical role the private sector plays on our continent. Africa's private sector is largely dominated by MSMEs. They account for up to 90% of all businesses in Africa. And as such, they remain one of the main sources of employment and sustainable social economic development on the continent. I have already overemphasized that. That is why at the 20th ordinary session of African Union, the Conference on African Ministers of Trade, abbreviated as CAMI 20, 
untitled Accelerating Industrialization for Africa within the post-2015 development agenda, which is the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. The agenda identified industrialization as the base for development. At this conference, it was clearly emphasized that the private sector plays a critical role in supporting sustainable industrialization. To harness the potential for industrialization to contribute to Africa's economic development, the Conference of African Ministers of Industry, CAMI 20, directed the member states to create an enabling environment for the creation and operation of small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, and small and medium-sized industries, SMIs, and place SMEs and SMIs at the center of the private sector-led development. Government doesn't create enough jobs. Civil servants are very, very few. Back home in Malawi, we don't even have half a million civil servants. And I'm sure it's the same wherever we go. But when you go to industry, when you go to commerce, traders, shop owners, supermarkets, they form the biggest chunk of employment. And this is why, administratively, governments have to take matters of business as a number one priority in whatever they are doing. But more often than not, you'll find it is the opposite. Governments take business people as a bother. And maybe even that's why publicity, in terms of economic activities, is not as good as we should be. They take business people as strangers. They take business people as an entity. In fact, they forget that they make their salaries. Because without business, the Commissioner General will agree with me. There will not be, be no taxes. And if there are no taxes, there will be no salaries for civil servants. But do civil servants take it that way? The answer is no. We have to change that mentality. We have to change that mindset. Let's take business people as our paymasters. And once we take them as our paymasters, we will respect them as such. So my colleagues here, I know there are a few civil servants who may beat me up, <laughs> believing I'm belittling them or demeaning them. Certainly I'm not. Where economic prosperity is concerned, it is the very ordinary people who are running a variety of businesses who matter. And certainly we can't do without them. Again, recognizing the importance of MSMEs at the global level, on the 6th of uh, April 2007, the United Nations adopted resolution number 71 stroke 279, designating the 27th of June as an International Commemoration Day of MSMEs. We are talking of more than 15 years ago. But to date, we don't see much activity on this day commemorating such an important day. That simply confirms that uh, anything to do with business is not taken seriously by the people who are supposed to nest the business. At least in Malawi, I don't see any activity. I don't know in Uganda, I don't know in Ghana, I don't know in Kenya. But it's not a day since it was proposed by the United Nations, we have not taken it seriously. I think we have to change that mindset. When we go back home, let's start reminding ourselves, how can we honor business developers? How can we celebrate this day? Do we need a holiday? Do we need activities? to showcase what the small businesses are doing. Very important for every nation, very important for every individual. This day serves to raise public awareness of the contributions of MSMEs to sustainable development and global economy. We don't do much about it, 
I've already said it. Let's wake up and start organizing. This day, subsequently, the African Union Commission developed an SME development strategy and action plan in 2019 to provide the policy guidelines for promoting uh, intra-regional and intra-Africa trade by integrating Africa MSEs into regional and global value chain. Networking internationally, movement of goods, movement of people, key for us to get where we dream to be. The vision of the AU SME strategy is to develop competitive, diversified, and sustainable economies underpinned by dynamic, entrepreneurial, and industrial sector that generate employment, reduce poverty, and foster social inclusion. The AU SME strategy is formulated to deliver results in the immediate acceleration of investment in value chains and uh, sectors that present uh, comparative advantages and economic growth that can be led to minimize poverty and hunger and improve job creation opportunities significantly across the continent. Uh, in line with this objective of the framework for the SME strategy, AUC in 2019 also commissioned a feasibility study for the establishment of Enterprise Africa Network, EAN, a continental platform that aims at facilitating and growing a pool of competitive SMEs uh, that are well positioned within the region, continental, and international markets. We have got the global as our market, but how much are we doing on this continent? That's the question all of us have to answer. One, trade within the continent is next to zero. We all believe we can import quality in China. We can import quality in America. We can import quality in Europe. That's what is in every African's mind. And even when our own goods are on the shop shelves, we ignore them. We would rather buy something from outside. Now, I'll tell you this. Importing is exporting jobs. And maybe that's why we have got massive unemployment on the continent. We have to rethink. Africa has the capacity to produce quality even better than anybody else. And I'm serious. But that, that feeling of saying something foreign is special. Is what is killing us. We have to change that mentality. We have to change that thinking. We have to embrace our own. We have to understand that if we have to create jobs, we have to produce. And if we have to produce, we have to buy what we have produced. We are producing. We are putting our local merchandise in the shops. The general populace is avoiding it, believing it's inferior. They're picking on something which is foreign, which they believe. It's psychological, which they believe is superior. At the end of the day, the same person is complaining. I haven't been employed for the past six months. I lost my job six months ago. And yet, he is busy exporting that job. It doesn't make sense to anybody. Let's think through this seriously and change our mentality of believing goods from outside the continent are more superior than our own. Far from it. The aspiration is that through AEAN, SMEs will be able to tap into a pool of accredited business development organizations, BDOs, to build their capacity to be more competitive. All these programs are aimed at making us more specialized, more competitive, more forward-looking, more dynamic, and at the end of the day, 
we are making Africa the continent of productivity. It can be done. The time to start is now. It is also to facilitate connectivity with regional and international markets and encourage networking, collaboration, alliances, and partnerships between African and the international business community. Uh, let us not look down upon ourselves. We have got the ability, we have got the brains, we have got the capacity. And naturally, you may not know this, Africa is the richest continent. But our wealth make other continents richer. It is all in our head. Africa has got fantastic minerals. Africa has got fantastic climate. Africa has got fantastic soils. Africa has got fantastic vegetation. And the list goes on. And yet, we are the poorest continent quite amazing. Let's rethink and start changing direction. I first met UMB when I was at the crossroads of my business. I had a serious problem and UMB has made it possible for me to still stand today. How did they do this? They did not work and put me in a box. They looked at me as an individual and got a product for me which helped me to survive the period. Banks should look at it and see how they can also go that way to be able to meet individual customers, tailor products to suit the individual customers and not to just box everybody together. Welcome aboard the safest airline in Africa. With industry leading safety measures to protect your well being. The first in Africa to earn a diamond standard of safety. Offering a more contactless, safe, and seamless experience. Delivered with a smile by Africa's first fully vaccinated crew. Creating special memories that bring the joy back to flying so you can continue making memories with your loved ones. Book your flight with Randair today. Randair, the safest airline in Africa. Randair, fly the dream of Africa. So we pick travelers, our typical customers are people flying in and out of the country. So we pick those from the airport wherever they are going and back and we do this through uh, a network of uh, driver partners uh, for whom we uh, give regular business and improve uh, livelihoods. They can book uh, through WhatsApp, they can call us, uh, they can email us. You know, we just try to make it as simple and convenient, as seamless as possible for our customers.